What's up guys, Chaos here, bringing you guys another video, and I know man, I know my hair is getting out of control, it's getting way too long, I know, I know, I'm getting a haircut this week, so I don't want to hear nothing about it, but today I'm bringing you guys a great Rex gameplay, it's an overtime game, it was from a player's lounge tournament, uh, guy was pretty good, at first I really did underestimate him, so you guys are going to see that early on, um, but it's going to be a really good game that you guys I think are really going to enjoy, so I hope you guys do. Make sure you guys drop a like for me because I know you guys have really been supporting the channel. I really appreciate that. I want you guys to continue to do so. I really appreciate you. If you guys are new, make sure you guys hit the sub button because if you don't, how are you going to see my other videos? And lastly, if you guys aren't new, make sure you guys hit that notification button so you guys never miss a video. Without further ado, let's jump into it. All right, boys. So you guys are going to see here this is a Players Lounge tournament. Uh, they used to have a lot of bigger tournaments on here, but they really only have them on Saturdays and Sundays now. The other ones during the week are small. But if any of you guys have played in them before, players on tournaments are always three minutes. And I'm gonna tell you guys what that means right now. I always tell you guys first, the first possession for each person is always a feel out drive, right? So with that, you always try to figure out, okay, trying to like make them work, you know, always try to figure out what are they gonna like to do throughout the game. Now, if that doesn't change, however, it makes those first possessions a lot more important. You really wanna get that first stop and you really wanna get that first score. So you see here, he's in bunch strong. now. One thing that I note right, uh, right away from Bunch Strong is the receiver on the left is always in an ISO. With that, that means if you have a cloud flat over there, it's going to man up if you don't do any shading or playing the sticks or change it to a hard flat, anything like that. So that's something I always take note of early because I don't want them to be able to glitch me out and have a wide open side for free yards. So that's something I noted early on from this formation. And from there, we just move on to see what he's doing to try to adjust to it. He hasn't really shown me anything yet. His really only, his only completion was kind of a lucky corner route that he just had a ton of time in the pocket and it just sat there above my clouds. But I'm not I'm not gonna get mad at that. We'll live with it. Big third down here to try to force a fourth down, and we get a big hit on Zeke. So big play there. Now we are in regs. If this was any other mode, except for maybe Mutt, you wouldn't better kick a 58 yard field goal. But we're in regs, and he's able to knock down a 58 yarder. So he gets three really off one lucky dot. So I'm not mad at it. But we did get to see his main formation. We got to see a few plays from it. And I'm not mad at that. We can we can live with that. We kind of got to feel out what he wanted to do. Now, I'm going to try to drive and get myself seven to put myself in a position to, to win the game. Because, like I said, it's a three-minute quarter. So if I get seven right here and it's my ball at half, that is monumental. It's huge. And I noticed right away he's in big nickel over G. So I'm just watching the loop, trying to mix in PA plays when I can. Uh, PA plays are really good against big nickel over G. When they don't blitz, when they blitz, it gets a little bit more complicated and things can start coming in. But I'm going to wait to see what he does before that. So good start here. We've thrown a few good passes. We haven't made any bad reads yet. Uh, just methodically moving the ball. With it getting to the second quarter here, I'd be cool with it taking the end of the uh, taking to the end of the half. But we get a laser over the top. If you give him, if someone gives me a long touchdown like that, I have to take it. And that's exactly what I do. We go up 7-3. Right now, I'm thinking the game's over. His first possession, he didn't really show me anything that was too crazy that I was really worried about. And I felt like I got a really easy seven. I was four for four. He didn't make me work much at all. Really felt like it was easy. So right here, he throws the ball right to me. I think maybe I baited him just a tiny bit, but I don't think a top, right there is where I was like, okay, a top player wouldn't have thrown that to me, even with the little mini swerve back that I did. I really, really felt like, okay, I'm getting ready to blow this kid out the water. Like this game is cooked, right? He, I, he got a lucky three the first possession. He threw right to me right there, and I got an easy seven. I'm thinking this game is really over. That's that's really all that was in my head. I think I'm going to blow him out. But with that mentality, sometimes things can get a little bit away from you. You're going to see it. So to finish out this half, what I'm thinking that I want this to definitely, at least if it's not the last drive, I want to at least take away his timeouts, make it tough on him to get any points before half. And I probably missed my wheel route right there. He touched on it like he went over there for a second, but I could have definitely thrown it. Instead, I try to high ball to Julio. Nothing doing, and we end up just taking a sack, and we go to the – we kick our field goal. Now, the problem with that drive was I didn't get seven, and I left him a timeout. The combination of those things make it a lot easier for him to get a field goal, and I kept it a one-possession game. So not, not the best drive after a stop. You want to at least get seven there, and if you're not going to get seven, you don't want to leave him much time. And we did both, so unfortunate. He gets an eternity in the pocket, gets a reroute, and is even able to get out of bounds. So now, instead of me even worrying about, oh, I don't even want him to get three, now he's in a great position to get seven. He still has a timeout. He's still got over 45 seconds. And he went to this gun spread. Now, that was the best change that he made all game. His bunch strong 
was super locked. He knew it, I knew it. That's why I thought, okay, I'm about to blow this kid out. He went to this gun spread. He had success with the inside zone, as you can see, and he had success passing the ball. I didn't do a good job against the gun spread that possession. He gets seven before half. So in a half that I literally dominated, I had a half a stop for his three, where I felt like it should have been a full stop, and I had a pick that led to three. And it's a tie game, guys, where I felt like he didn't do anything versus me. So that's a tough spot. Now we're in a third and 19 to start the half where I'm like, okay, this dude really might win this game. And right there, we just are able to fit that in to save the drive. Big time straight to Julio. You saw me shaking my head at the end because I'm like, yo, what the heck is going on? I'm dominating this kid. And now all of a sudden it's 10 10. So I was just, I don't know, I'm just a little frustrated. And when I get frustrated like that, that's when things start to go wrong is he screams at me right there i told you guys pa will help you pick up big nickel over g when they're doing the block shit defense but when they start mixing the blitz that pa starts getting you hollered at and you've seen it these last two plays i've taken two sacks on this drive both of which were holding pa getting me screamed at next play here we're about to have a wide open in route instead we throw it right to him i really thought he wouldn't get back to that but it might have just been a bad pass lead for me. I don't know. You guys can be the judge on it. I'm just going to say it was a bad read. And I should have hit my in route over the middle. Who knows? He's back in this gun spread. He had success with it last half. He's going to obviously go back to it. He'd be stupid not to. I tell you guys all the time, if you're having success with something and the other person's having trouble stopping it, don't call something else. Keep calling it to you until they show they can do something versus it. He's in gun spread. I can't stop his inside zone. As you can see, I'm trying to shoot this backside gap now. He's killing me with that. He's killing me with these short passes because it's a spread out field. The spread really makes it tough on you. You kind of can't come out of cover too, in my opinion. I feel like, well, you can't, I don't even know, honestly. Like, I just feel like the way it was spreading out my 335, it gave me a lot of trouble. And sometimes you can do well against it. It's, it's, gun spread's tough, man. That's why K Max so successful with it. K Max, uh, highly competitive, great pro player right now. He had a great year. And he had a lot of success in this gun spread. And the guy I'm playing right now is having a lot of success with it as well. I picked it up a little bit by the end of that possession. I held him to three. He kicks another 59 yarder. And that's the other thing about regs. So I kicked three, right? I kicked it from the 10 yard line, which was, it was a great drive. He kicked it from the 41 and the 42. So he, he drove the ball about from the 25 to the 40 of his, he drove the ball about 30 yards and got six points from it. So that's the other tale of the game. It's like, I really am out playing him, but he's got more points on the scoreboard. So we have to knuckle up, go down here, at least get three. I'm hoping to get seven, but at least get three here and force overtime because there's no way I should lose this game. I've been passing the ball great. He did have one really good defensive possession, which was to start the second half. However, I felt like I've dominated. So the only answer for me is to make sure I win this game. Now, we're driving it down here. Same position we were at the end of the first half. There's about a minute to go. He's got all of his timeouts. I obviously want to get seven. Seven wins this game, I think, in my opinion, with the way he's played with the way he's played offense. Now, if I do have to settle for three, I do not want him to have any time left. And I did a better job. I got myself a first down. I stayed in bounds. Luckily, I really don't know how I stayed in bounds with that quarterback run, but that's a different conversation. Now he's going to get three runs from me. I'm going to take all of his timeouts. I'm either going to get seven or I'm taking a timeout. Now, right there, Devontae Freeman just didn't fight for me the way I thought he should. Next play, he blows me up, and we're at fourth and goal from the two. And I'm thinking to myself, do I go for it? Do I not? I don't know. I was really back and forth. The, the chat's yelling, go for it, go for it, go for it. I was like, you know what? This kid is not better than me. If a kid is not better than you, you go to overtime. If you're if you're the worst player, go ahead and go for the win right there. You're like, all right, if he... If I get the ball to half, he's probably at that overtime. He's going to stop me, and then he'll win. If he gets ball force, he's probably just going to score on me. Go for the win. I feel like I'm better than this kid. I feel like this kid has no right being in this game. No offense to him. I felt like I completely outplayed him. I had more yards. I had more stops. I just feel like I've outplayed him. So my reasoning is I'm going to go to overtime. If he gets the ball, I'm going to stop him. If I get the ball, I'm going to score. I get the ball, and as you guys can see, we are methodically driving down the field. We're doing a really good job up until that run right there where we lose three but we're just making good quick crisp reads and we're moving the ball we're not letting him blitz us last last uh last drive or whatever or sorry two drives ago out of half i let him blitz me like crazy i'm not allowing that anymore i'll take my five yard passes i preach all the time five yard passes win games and right there 
we try to go to Julio and just try to ag it. I feel like I catch that probably like seven, eight out of ten times, but we don't get it down right there. Second and goal. We're in the same position. We've struggled. This is another reason why the game's not over with. Is because we struggled in the red zone. And right there, I drop a no. That's that's not a 7 out of 10. That's about a 99 out of 100 catch right there. But I drop it. So that was frustrating because I felt like I won the game. But we're in the same position we were all day. Struggling in the red zone. And finally, we get ourselves a laser. Good game to him. We struggled probably a little bit more than we should have. But the fact of the matter is, we got the dub. And that's all that matters. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, like, comment, subscribe. And let me know in the comment section what you guys would like to see and what maybe I could do better. But it is what it is. Hope you guys enjoy it. Take it easy. Peace.